Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and beautiful Today channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Shayla may eventually have won and driven Steffi out of Finn's life for good. In the rearmost, the bold and the beautiful exercise for September 4-8, has Finn lost Steffi to Sheila? Read on and watch the exercise below. Last week, Finn made raids with Steffi when he surprised her with a special ramen lunch. Finn admitted he knew Sheila had come between them and promised he wouldn't let it be again. Still, he still felt Liam, Aka, little puke, was causing problems and wanted Steffi back, which in fact he does. As Finn brazened Liam and told him to stop using Sheila to try and break up his marriage, Steffi eventually made the decision it was time to go home to her hubby, but it was Ridge, not Steffi, who broke this news to Liam. Still, Finn and Steffi's romantic reunion came to a grinding halt when Steffi spotted Sheila chirping at them through the window. Coming up, Steffi orders Finn to tell Sheila to leave and no way come back. Sheila states she's Finn's mama, but Steffi insists she'll no way be a part of your family. Steffi again tells Finn to tell her, but he seems torn. At Spencer, Liam says Sheila is dangerous and commodity bad is going to be meanwhile, Sheila confides in Deacon that she doesn't suppose she has to worry about Steffi for much longer. He asks, what do you mean Sheila? What does she mean? Is she planning to try and kill Steffi again? Eventually, in gashes, Steffi tells Finn that she's made a decision. He asks, What are you saying? Is Steffi going to leave Finn for alternate time, maybe for good? At Spencer, Liam's mind drifted to kissing Steffi in Rome. Rich arrived to inform Liam that Steffi had decided to return home to Finn. Liam had a hard time believing Steffi would do that because the stakes and pitfalls were still the same. Liam said Steffi was smarter than that, and he hoped she wouldn't take her eye off the ball. Ridge did not suppose there was a chance of that and participated that Steffi still had agonies about Sheila. Ridge felt responsible for Sheila being free. Your pater's plan made no sense. I should not have trusted him because he is an idiot. No offense, Ridge griped. Ridge said he should have known none of it would work, but there he would bid in a basement with Chen, pretending to watch about Chen's birthplace. Ridge felt as if he should have done more. Liam said that while Ridge was willing to do anything he could to stop Sheila, Finn wasn't. Rather, Finn was perfunctory and sympathetic to Sheila at a time when no restraining order could keep Sheila from getting the love she felt she demanded, and she would get that love from her son. Of that, Liam was sure. Ridge agreed that all Sheila wanted was to feel love. Ridge wished he felt sorry for her, but he didn't. Well, Finn does, Liam replied. Liam griped about Finn, but Ridge said he liked and admired Finn. Did I want my son to be married to the generative Satan? No, but it happed, Ridge concluded. Ridge was unhappy that Steffi was moving back in with Finn. Liam said it was nice to hear that Ridge agreed with Liam. Liam had felt like his enterprises had fallen on deaf cognizance. Liam said he wouldn't hide his passions about Steffi, but indeed if he had not realized those effects about her, he would still want to cover her and his son. Liam claimed that Finn was dazed by his connection with Sheila and it wouldn't end well. At Deacon's place, Cleric was upset about an forthcoming health examination. Sheila offered to make sure he passed, but he said the eatery would pass on its own. The content turned to Sheila's relationship with Finn. Deacon recalled that Sheila had suggested at commodity passing that day. He asked what was going on in her head. Sheila said that she was tired of her life being on hold and she intended to do commodity about it that day. Deacon stated that Sheila had gotten another chance at life and it was not on hold because she could resuscitate herself. He noted that she had a place to stay and someone to count on. She replied that she was thankful for what he would done for her, but she felt as if she was on hold in the Bitsy apartment because everyone abominated her. She stated that nothing differently would count if only she could win Finn over. Latterly, Sheila looked for commodity as Deacon tried to move Sheila to see that she would made a lot of advance with Finn in a short quantum of time. Deacon questioned whether it was wise to push hard in presto. He reminded her that Steffi and the kitties were the loves of Finn's life, not Sheila. Sheila replied that maters were dealt tough cards. She said maters nurtured their kitties in the womb and wondered what kind of people the kitties would be. They supplicated that the kitties wouldn't make their miscalculations. 
She said she would been asked to give her son up before she would indeed had the joy of bringing him into the world. She felt that times latterly, she was suffering the disappointment all maters. Did that her son would fall in love with someone and love them further than he loved his mama, despite the nurturing. Sheila pledged that Steffi would no way get between Finn and Sheila again. Determined, Sheila seized her bag and paraded out of the apartment. At the precipice house, Finn was relieved to hear Steffi say she wanted to return home. Steffi and Finn participated how important they'd missed each other. She said the kitties missed him too. Finn was sorry he would lost her trust. He said she and their family would always be first, and she could trust it. They uttered that they loved each other, and they kissed. Finn asked if the kitties knew they'd be home, but Steffi said she wanted to talk to him first because she was still leery about Sheila being out there. Finn mentioned that he would visited Liam and made it clear that Liam demanded to admire Steffi and Finn's marriage. Finn said Liam had said commodity that had reverberated with Finn. Finn asserted that it was his job to assure her that she and the kitties were safe and he would do everything within his power to cover them. He promised they'd be safe and he hugged Steffi. Finn confessed that there were clothes and takeout boxes in the kitchen Gomorrah. He said he would throw them in there in a fear and he was a mess without her. Steffi said she would allowed. He would always love to clean. Finn confessed that he would regress to his med academy days. Steffi was glad she would met him after those days, but she claimed that he would be the one to clean up the mess. Steffi turned the content to Sheila and asked if Finn had heard from her. Finn claimed that he would had no contact with Sheila and he said that indeed if he had, he'd have told Sheila that he did not want to have any contact with her. He claimed to know the trouble of Sheila, and he would no way forget what had happened in that alley. Finn said that he would give his life for Steffi, and he would mend it when he would promise to do everything within his power to keep Sheila down from them. Steffi said she believed him. Outside the kitchen glass door, Sheila's shadow appeared. Finn was recognized that Steffi had returned and would give him an alternate chance. Steffi said she would no way wanted to take the kitties, but she would felt that she would had to do so to keep them safe. Finn replied that he wouldn't have asked for their return without knowing he could keep them safe. Finn pledged that Steffi would no way have to deal with Sheila again. Finn and Steffi began speaking privately. She said she had not brought the kitties because she would wanted time to reconnect with Finn. Steffi and Finn began to passionately make out, but Steffi jounced, seeing a shadow on the kitchen curtain. She dismissed it as nothing and proceeded kissing Finn. Sheila browsed through the sliding glass door and Steffi screamed. Judge Evan Scott, Michael Corbett, who portrayed David Kimball on The Young and the Restless, Warren Carter on Search for Tomorrow, Michael Pavel, Jr. on Ryan's Hope, and Brent Cameron on One Life to Live, took no joy out of letting Sheila go free. He led with a series of compliments to all who were gathered. Thanks for watching if you liked this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.